Hi, I'm Phil, and today I'm going to um, look at the M5 stack power over Ethernet unit, and I'm going to be testing it. So um, using this mind map, I'll um, start off by describing it, looking at the hardware, the software tools that are available for projects, and some of the projects. And uh, finally, I'll give you some references. So the unit itself, you can consider it as an Ethernet to a UART converter. So um, serial data comes in on the um, Ethernet side, and uh, you can tap into that uh, on the uh, UART, or you can send messages out on the UART, and you can target them <clears throat> for... Um, particular um, levels on your um, Ethernet network. So um, i got the cheapest one, and there's been two more uh, variations that have been released since. Uh, the one I have has a uh, embedded ESP32 on board. And um, the way you use it is that... Um, you um, your software in a host computer sends AT commands to, um, uh, and that's used by the embedded ESP within the power over Ethernet unit. Okay, so um, here's a, a little bit more data on its features. Um, the idea is that you would use this um, for both power and communications using an ethernet cable. And the power has a maximum load of six watts. Uh, and here, I'm also looking at the um, development platforms that are available. They include UI Flow, the Arduino IDE, and the ESP IDF. Okay, plenty of help from um, M5 Stack in terms of uh, schematics and um, I got four of these units and spent considerable time getting them to work. And um, I started off looking at uh, tools available on the internet. And there are plenty of ex examples of using the Arduino IDE. Um, and th these are used in th uh, three categories, TCP, HTTP client, and a MQTT client. And the examples um, are um, run on hosts M5 stack computers, such as the Core, the Core 2, uh, M5 stick, and the Atom. So I, I tried um, all of those core, all of those computers, except for the M5 Core 2. And the tools for UI Flow are even easier to use. And there's a an example that is provided. So all you've got to do is fill out the, the, uh, the block, complete that, and you can develop your own uh, software using the UI flow as a uh, development environment. So here are the projects. All of my initial projects are uh, just trying to see what worked. And I'm using the existing demos uh, and I started off with projects on MQTT and uh, also on HTTP. So um, I did most of my work on MQTT and um, I did both the Arduino and the UI Flow. So uh, you can see here that I didn't get any successful results at all, even though I tried quite a number of times with the Arduino examples, they just wouldn't work. But eventually, I was able to get the um, uh, an example going on the uh, UI flow. So um, let's have a look at that. Um, I'll, uh, the idea was that I wanted to um, see if the example worked. And I just w also wanted to modify the example. Um, I'll show you the connections of my hardware, what hardware I used and a closer look at the software 
and we'll look at the results. So here's the hardware. Uh, basically, I'm using um, equipment or components from M5 Stack, including the um, the core, the basic um, core. Uh, on that, I'm um, adding the M5 Go Bottom, and that gives me access to ports C and B. And um, I uh, want to power the um, core uh, by using a uh, PT link uh, power over Ethernet injector. And of course, you need a PC with um, a uh, Ethernet infrastructure, including a port switch and cables. So we're starting off with the uh, the core plus the uh, M5 Go base. Uh, connect to uh, port. Uh, I've got down here port uh, B, which is the um, the black one. But actually, in the project, that should be port C, which is the uh, the blue colored port on the uh, the core. And I connect the um, USB cable to my Windows PC. The rest of the connections are all Ethernet. So I've got one Ethernet connection going to a port server. And the port server also provides an input to the uh, power over Ethernet injector. And that connects to the, uh, PO, the M5 stack POE unit. And here's my software. So I'm actually modifying M5 Stacks demo, but I'm modifying it for my own uh, MQTT server. And um, I've noticed that um, the demo is incomplete. So I'm uh, making the timer work. And the idea is that I'll publish a message um, once every second and show the results of that. Uh, they'll be incremented. And I've also added a, um, a bit of help to debug using the, um, the colored circle here. So um, when it's green, it's ready to publish. And when it's red, it won't publish. And that happens in the main loop of the uh, software. And I'm using uh, UI Flow. And uh, you can see that I've already modified the user inter uh, interface uh, by painting the um, uh, messages and labels on the screen. So it's quite a simple program. It's got a setup uh, where I'm initializing my um, MQTT server and access to it. And um, I'm also initializing the timer. Then I'm waiting uh, until I subscribe to the MQTT topic. And um, after that, I, I set a message prefix and um, I use a um, Boolean variable called publish flag, which is only set at the end of a minute period. And uh, when that happens in the main loop, it then publishes the both the uh, main message to the um, topic that I've got down here. And I acknowledge that on the screen. Then I just uh, repeat that, just wait until the next second and publish a, uh, a new message that shows you the, um, cap, the value of the um, number of seconds since I powered up. Okay, so it worked okay. It worked quite well. Uh, I was able to um, connect to my MQTT server. And I used MQTT Explorer on my Windows PC. And you can see the results on the right here, where I was able to get the messages that I published. And I was also able to publish from the MQTT Explorer. So you can see my arrangement on the bottom. And uh, these are the messages for publishing, for downloading and uploading. So uh, I was quite happy with the results. It was nice to get it all going. And um, I'll have to try and see if I can get the Arduino uh, versions of um, these demonstrations to work. 
Okay, so that's all for now. Catch up with you later.